you guys, Sean T. Phillips here with our brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Shambo today. Think I go out today, see things came out, see things on sale today. Today though, some of the big releases that come out is uh, Richard Jewell, uh, that releases, as well as uh, the Black Christmas uh, remake comes out. Uh, Jumanji, the uh, next level, that one comes out. And with that one, I believe uh, Best Buy has an exclusive steelbook of that. I don't know for sure, though, if there's any exclusives at Target or Walmart for that one. I don't believe so. There might be like an exclusive, like, double feature or something like that at uh, Walmart. I'm not 100% sure, though. Other than that, though, uh, Superman, uh, Red Sun, that was one of the other ones that comes out today. And I think, um, I believe Best Buy has an exclusive edition that comes with a, uh, a toy of uh, Superman with that one, I believe. Leave. Uh, also, though, at the end of this video is going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. So definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video. And as always, too, let me know in the comments below you know, what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that I reviewed, if you guys have seen them, also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. But uh, this weekend, though, I did go uh, to the movies on Saturday before everything closed because, you know, now all the movie theaters are closed. And I did see, um, you know, the movie The Hunt. And it was one of those movies, like, I feel like if I was in a better frame of mind, I think I would have, like, maybe liked it a little bit more. But I kind of was, like, um, thinking, like, should I have been in the th movies? You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't busy, but I was kind of there, like real like nervous and stuff like that and like hoping no one coughed and all that kind of stuff and the one thing too that was kind of like um kind of upsetting with the movie too was like the movie kind of from the trailers you kind of thought like emma roberts was going to be like a big part of the movie but like her character was like out of the movie in the first like you know and this is not a spoil she's out in the movie in the first like minute so it was like a really quick role ethan Supley was also in the movie he had a bigger part you know i've been a fan of him forever since like the days of like boy meets world and like mall rats is the you know playing the guy who couldn't see uh the sailboat and that kind of stuff but you know theater wise though there'll be no uh you know movies and theaters for a long time but if you guys didn't hear though uh, universal is going to be one of the first places you know to um put the movies on video on demand so this friday they're going to be putting i think on friday they're putting invisible man up they're actually putting the hunt up uh, on there and then when Trolls World Tour is going to go on there and you basically can rent the movies on there for $20 and it's like a 48 hour rental which is not a bad way to do it so I'm hoping like uh, other companies start doing that like Sony like will put like Bloodshot because that's one I didn't get to see and I really wanted to see that so I'm hoping like they'll put that on there and more studios will do that and like I said it's like a $20 rental thing it's not a bad way to do it though but we'll see though how, how if they go you know more um, studios start to do that though uh, because I really do think it's an interesting uh, way to do it. But luckily enough in here, though, they have out all the new stuff, so that's good. But, you know, because I wasn't sure if they would because of all the stuff that's going on and, like, having to restock everything. Uh, in Walmart, though, I'll show, like, some of how it looks and everything. But um, the new releases, like I was saying, was uh, this DC Universe uh, Superman uh, Red Sun movie, and that one's $17.99 for the um, Blu-ray DVD combo of that one. I'll have a, a review of this one at the end of this video, uh, along with uh, Jumanji, uh, The Next Level, and that one's uh, $24.99 for the Blu-ray of this one. I actually really like this movie. It wasn't, at, I didn't like it as much as the last one, but I still really did like this one. And then the uh, DVD of that one is on uh, $19.99. Other than that, though, they have uh, Richard Jewell, and that one here is 1999 for the uh, blu-ray of that one and then uh, 1799 for the uh, DVD of that one other than that though I don't see anything else different here we'll check over in the section as well to see if there's anything else different but yeah like I said other than that those seems to be the main things in here I don't see black Christmas that's one I probably will get um, hopefully they have it at Walmart or they have it over in the actual section we'll see though but in there though that luckily enough they had everything out and they had like um, Jumanji on 4K in there and that one was uh, $29.99 for that one. They also had um, over there, uh, they did have Black Christmas and that was $22.99 but I ended up price matching that one because that one's like uh, $19.99 at Walmart and um, on Amazon and everything. So like I said, I ended up picking up the Black Christmas remake which wasn't great but it's one of those ones I just kind of wanted to get, kind of like to have on the shelf and it really wasn't awful and it also has on here deleted and extended scenes alternate ending and stuff like that so it wasn't terrible like it was it was an okay watch uh, other than that though uh, they did have a uh, Superman Red Sun and they actually had an exclusive of that one over there uh, exclusive uh, steelbook of that one and that one was $19.99 for that but now I'm gonna head over to uh, Walmart 
Into Walmart we go. But when it comes to, you know, doing these DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping videos, I'm going to still continue doing them as long as I can, you know, do them the same way. As long as, you know, uh, Walmart and Target stay open. I feel like they will because they have food. And that would be like the one thing that will keep them open. Uh, I, I, you know, a lot of places though, like Hot Topic and a bunch of different uh, stores have closed. You know, uh, of course, you know, Disney closed. So, like, I could see, like, Best Buy maybe closing. I don't know for sure, but I could kind of see that may be happening, you know, because it's not like an essential kind of thing. I will say that's very interesting. I've never knew that they locked socks up. I've never seen that in my life. They must have just started locking the socks up. So that, that's very strange. But, you know, it's like I said, as long as I can do them the same way, I will. Uh, and worst case, like if say that, you know, um, you know, Walmart and Target did close, then I would probably on Tuesdays do things very different. Like I would go and still do a video, but I would kind of like do a lot of it like, um, you know, showing on the internet, you know, the stuff that came out. And you know, like, cause you, I'm sure like the store, the, um, you know, the, the websites will still be opened. So you guys can order them online and stuff like that. So I'll show them like that. I mean, if it comes down to that, but I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, at least Target and Walmarts continue to stay open. But it's one of those things, things keep changing and all that kind of stuff. But I am going to do though more uh, different kind of videos like um, more collection videos like my favorite horror movies and uh, out of print and more of those kind of videos so in the comments below though let me know um, some of those kind of things you'd like to see me do any uh, like collection videos or like top horror or any of that kind of stuff so let me know like I said in the comments below some of that kind of stuff I'm also going to try and do more live streams I did one last night so we'll definitely try and do more of those as well and I'll definitely try and do them at an earlier time because I did one really late last night like really really late but I'll definitely try and do more of those as well though but in here though they actually don't have quite a few things out so I'm really glad though I bought Black Christmas at Target I might look at another Walmart quickly I'm not gonna go around to a bunch of them um, I'll, I'll sort of evaluate the situations as I go but um, you know they do have uh, the welcome uh, you know Jumanji the next level here on a 4k and that one's a 2796 for that one uh, 2296 for the blu-ray DVD combo so it's a little cheaper here than it was at Target uh, Target, because uh, I think Target was $24.99, and then the the uh, DVD here of that is uh, $17.96. They also have, like I was mentioning, uh, I thought there was like a collection that was like an exclusive to Walmart, and this one here has it's only a DVD version, but it has all the movies as well as the original Jumanji for uh, $29.99 on um, you know DVD. So that's not a bad price for all of them together like that. Uh, other than that, though, like I said, everything else here wasn't uh, changed out. So we may go to another one. We'll just see how it looks, though. If it's like if it's too crazy, it won't do it. But because uh, I looked over here as well, and I didn't see anything else like mixed in here. Because sometimes stuff is kind of mixed in, like around this spot and that kind of stuff. And it didn't look like that today. I didn't because I didn't see like the Superman one or anything like that. They did have. I saw this a couple days ago. This um like uh, all the James Bond movies, like these, uh, like I think these might be newer editions, I can't say for sure, but they, all these James Bond ones here for $5 on DVD, so that's not a bad price for these ones if you guys want DVD editions of them. And they have, and they're kind of cool covers on these ones. I, I don't know if they're, they're actually not like a paper thing, so they're like a brand new cover on these ones. But like I said, probably head over though to another Walmart and see how it looks though. Uh, and see what uh, any other kind of stuff they have though. But those wondering though, like who are asking about like the situation with the paper towels, it's the same the way that it is pretty much everywhere. Like totally, fully gone. And like you see like all the cleaning stuff is all totally gone. And all that kind of stuff over here, you know, all gone. I, I did in Target though get some more bottled water. I got a thing of water because I hadn't actually seen that much water. So at least I found some, I have a decent amount at home, but at least I was able to get a little more though. But yeah, like this section is the top, you know, picked over, as well as the other one that's pretty bad is the canned food aisles. That's the one, too. Because you see, though, all the sections, though, like the cereals are all picked over. I, I'm not going to lie, it's, I kind of like to get in and get out of here lately when it's like this, because um, when I was in here, you know, a couple days ago, you see, like, here's the canned section, you see, like, ramen. It kind of, like makes you sort of almost sort of honestly kind of feel like crying a little bit i'm not gonna lie so i kind of just want to honestly get out of here but it's just a weird surreal strange thing right now plenty of like 
chips and Cheetos and stuff though. And the frozen is the same situation. Really, really, you know, picked over. They luckily enough though, like the stuff that I get, like Morning Star and a lot of the vegetarian stuff, that stuff's usually all full. But all the other stuff is usually gone. Like the there's still on ice cream though. There seems to be a lot of sweets and that kind of stuff. But yeah, we'll head over to another Walmart quick and just kind of look at what they have there. And one thing too, that the way to look at it too is, it's not like there's like a shortage of, um, you know, like it's not able to be more. There will be more going into the stores. There'll be more paper towels, there'll be more food. It's kind of like everyone kind of hoarded it up and grabbed so much at one time in the beginning. So I know more will be coming and stuff like that. And I, I you know, we have a lot of stuff stocked up at home. It's just, it's like a weird thing. Cause I always wondered like, oh, what would it be like you know, when you watch like 28 Days Later and like those kind of things, like what would it be like to be like when everything was like picked over like that? Because I've never actually seen it to that degree. Like in, and when I was in Maryland, you know, they had snowstorms and people would kind of buy up a lot of things, but I'd never have seen it like that. So it's a just a weird, not great time. And you know, everything too is getting canceled as I'm sure it's happening to all, it's happening to everybody, but like movie projects are all delayed and changed and all that kind of stuff. So just a, a weird, weird time right now. I, I don't want to be gloom or anything. I'm just kind of being as honest as I can with everything. It's just, you know, it's just a very strange time right now. Into the second Walmart we go. Well, in here though, I definitely do see more stuff out. Like, um, the, you know, Jumanji, they have all the Jumanji ones out here. Uh, Superman, Red Sun. It doesn't look like there's any exclusives here, but it's $17.99. For the um, the Blu-ray DVD combo, $14.99 for the DVD, and it says only at Walmart. So I guess like the DVD edition is a Walmart exclusive for that one. And then Richard Jewell here is $19.99 for the Blu-ray, $17.99 for the DVD. Let's see if there's what else there is in here mixed in. So around here seems to be all the same stuff. I'm not sure if they have Black Christmas. Let's see. They might it might be on this side if they have it. Oh yeah, so they do they do have Black Christmas here for $19.99 here. Other than that though uh, this one here like one piece uh, stampede I believe that one released today for $19.99 other than that though I don't see anything no, no here's one of the things that came out this movie here called um uncaged this is from the director who did the movie the lift and then he did a remake as well of his film I think called like the shaft or the elevator or something like that um, I'm gonna talk about this at the end of this video but that's um $9.96 for that one but it was directed by Dick Mass, who did like a bunch of different stuff. He also did a movie called Amsterdam. I think it was called Amster Amsterdam or Amsterdam. But let's see if there's anything else mixed in in here. It doesn't look like it. It seems to me like it's all the same stuff. Because I don't think there was anything else major that I'm not seeing uh, new release wise. Oh no, there, I do see a couple other things here. Um, yeah, yeah, there, so I knew there was a few other things. This is another one I'm going to talk about at the end of this video. This one called 47 Hours to Live. This one I really liked. This was actually a really pretty, pretty cool movie here. Um, one of the other ones today is on this one called Abigail. It's a really, really hard to put back in. <laughs> so, so you have to like, it's not easy. This one here called Abigail. Uh, this release today, as well as Bone Breaker. Uh, I just watched this one last night. I didn't get to put, get in the review parts of this video. I'll talk about this next week. But I actually thought this one was actually cool as well. This was like um, basically about like these people that were going out to make like a video out in the woods, like a like a workout video for YouTube. And the owner of the land was this crazy woman, and she goes and like comes after them to try and kill them. Uh, and this is another one that came out today. Uh, Don't speak. And this is um, uh, Scott Jeffrey, who also was behind, you know, uh, Cupid. Uh, you know, I've been in some of his movies, like I filmed some scenes and stuff for them. Uh, this one here, like I said, this one came out, this is $9.99. And I might pick up a copy of this. This one's like loose in here, so it's hopefully they're not all, this one's not loose. So I'll probably get a copy of this one uh, as well. And I think this one here, A Good Kill, I believe this may have released today. Um, as well as um, this, like a, a new a new edition here of this movie, Penance, which is like a really crazy uh, movie. And I, and I really like this one when I saw this one years back. I don't know what's different about this one. If this is like a different cut of the movie or anything like that. But um, this one has like um, like uh, a lot of cameos in here, like Michael Worker and stuff. And Michael Worker plays like this really crazy bad guy role in this movie, which is actually a pretty cool movie. Um, I should have a copy soon of this one to review the new edition. But other than that, though, it doesn't look like anything else uh, different. But like I said, I uh, would definitely recommend 47. I mean, like I said, I'm going to talk about this at the end, but really did like this one a lot. Um, and same with this one, I thought this was actually pretty cool. Like I said, I'll have a full review of that one uh, next week. 
But other than that though, it doesn't look like there's anything else uh, different here though as far as I can tell. Yeah, but in there though, I end up, like I said, got the um, Don't Speak movie in there. But uh, now, gonna head over to uh, Best Buy and see, you know, like I said, I believe there's an exclusive over there for the um, Superman Red Sun. I think it's, like I said, one that comes with like a toy. Uh, I, mean, I, I don't think there's a Jumanji one, uh, uh, you know, uh, exclusive over there, but we'll see though. Into Best Buy we go. But in here, they, like I was saying though, with Jumanji, they do have a um, you know exclusive steelbook of that one for $32.99. That's actually a pretty cool uh, image on this one. It's cool how this one has, like all the ones have different covers. Like the Blu-ray has a different cover, the 4K. And I actually, like I said, I actually really like the uh, image on this one here. Like I said, that's $32.99. And Black Christmas here is $22.99. But in there, though, they did have a, a standee out for uh, Jumanji, uh, you know, the next level as well. And in the section, they had some uh, more steelbooks. The guy was over there doing some stocking and stuff, too, so I wasn't able to look too well. And I didn't see any of the Superman Red Sun exclusives. Like I said, I believe there was one that was supposed to be a Best Buy exclusive that had a uh, toy in it, but I did not see that one in there. But anyway, though, guys, like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also, in the comments below, let me know, you know, if you guys did go out and pick up anything today. Let me know in the comments below you know what you guys picked up also be sure to as well to let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of all the dvds blu-rays and 4ks that i reviewed at the end of this video well you know what you guys thought of them, if you guys have seen any of them also if you guys plan on picking any of them up but anyway though guys thanks again for watching subscribing now stay tuned for the brand new reviews and the first one I got here is from Shout Factory, Scream Factory line. This is the uh, collector's edition here of April Fool's Day. This is one of those slasher films, though. I feel like you don't hear about it as much as some of the other ones. And it's actually a really, really great underrated movie. I've always really loved this one. This has in here uh, Tom Wilson, you know, who, of course, played, uh, you know, Biff in the Back to the Future films. And I feel like he filmed this, like, um probably like right before uh you know back to the future shot or like right after like right around that exact same time so he definitely has like his exact like look that he had in the first back to the future film and it's you know he also though it has um you know clayton um you know um you know, Roner, who was in like um, things like Just One of the Guys, or and a bunch of other movies, lots of different stuff. You know, and um, as well as you know, Deborah Foreman, who was in Valley Girl, and it's basically though about Deborah Foreman's character who invites like her all of her college friends to go to her house, like her family house. It's kind of like you know one of those places where it's like on an island and you have to take like this ferry to get over, and like the only way off this island is this ferry. And essentially though, when her and her friends get to this house. It's kind of like, um, one by one, bad things are happening to them. And it's kind of like, you know, they're dying. And it's kind of like, is, is there somebody there, you know, killing them? Like, what exactly is going on here? And it's got, like, lots of, like, uh, surprises in this movie, too. Like, I don't want to ruin anything in this movie, but it's got, like, a, like some really, really big surprises of what's going on and everything. But I don't know. I just love the, the atmosphere of, the mo of this movie. I also really love the music, you know, that um, you know, Charles Bernstein did. And, like, I don't know how to explain it, but, like, the, um, the music always in this movie kind of reminds me of like it had in, like an inspired Drop Dead Fred like the music in Drop Dead Fred I don't know how to explain it but it's got like that similar kind of sound and it's like um it's like a really like a weird kind of like um synth keyboards that they're doing that in some ways almost don't feel like they would fit to this movie but then like really does fit and I really like it I really love the music in this movie like that's one of my favorite parts is like the music in this movie especially like the um the theme that they have when they're like doing this flashback scene at the beginning of the movie. But on here though, this has uh, brand new interviews on here with the director and some of the actors on here, as well as the cinematographer and composer on this one, a theatrical trailer and uh, TV spots. But like I said, this is like a great slasher film. I would highly recommend you guys check this out. And also it has a uh, reversible artwork. So it has the original, uh, you know, poster image for this one as well. But really, really glad to have this one here on uh, Blu-ray. The next one here is from Shot Factory, Scream Factory line as well. This is a movie from 2001 which is directed by Ernest Dickens Dickerson and this is uh, starring uh, Snoop Dogg. This is another one you don't hear about too often. I remember though seeing this one back in the day when this released I think on DVD but I had never had not seen this one in years and years and years and always really liked this though. I remember when I, when I first saw it I remember really liking it. Like I said I had not seen this one in such a long time and I, I might have saw it, seen it in theaters. I can't remember for sure though if I did or not and this one um 
is basically though about Snoop Dogg uh, and his character in the very beginning of this movie takes place in 1979, the beginning when it starts. And you know, he's kind of like the protector of his of where he lives and kind of like um, you know his na the neighborhood where he lives and everything. And essentially though, something bad happens to him and he ends up getting killed. And you find out more throughout this movie about what had happened to him and like what was going on and all this stuff. And and it's basically though uh, where he died. You know, he kind of is haunting his kind of like um, kind of um, mansion kind of how not kind of like the house that he lives at in like the, the the middle of the, the the city where he lived it's kind of like this big kind of place where he's kind of haunting it there. And what ends up happening though is it's a group of these uh, these teenagers who end up, you know, buying where he lived. And weird, bad things that happen there throughout the years, but they end up buying this because they want to turn it into like a nightclub. So they're kind of like playing to like, you know, remodel the place, fix it all up. One of the um, people who buys it is um, Catherine Isabel's character, you know, who of course, um, Catherine Isabel, who of course was in the Ginger Snaps films and uh, Freddy vs. Jason, uh, a bunch of different movies but basically though they all you know go in there and of course though they end up basically awakening a uh, Snoop Dogg's character and he wants to go and get revenge on you know those that you know the person that killed him and it's all kind of crazy stuff stuff happening it's actually a very very fun movie on here though it has a uh, brand new interviews on here with the direct with director Ernest Dickinson as well as the screenwriter director of photography on here special effects makeup artist has a, a commentary track on here archival commentary track with um, Snoop Dogg and the director as well as um, some featurettes on here. It has deleted scenes. Uh, it has a um, uh, you know music video, theatrical uh, press kit, and a th theatrical trailer on this one. The next one here is from Lion's Gate, and this is one I watched this last night. Really like this movie. That I, I really like the stuff that Eliza Wood is like producing uh, lately. And in this one, I don't believe he produced it, this one, but he was acting in this one. But it has a similar vibe to the things that he's been producing lately because he produced like The Greasy Strangler and a lot of really cool cool indie movies and this one though has some like greasy strangler kind of dialogue which i really like because it's really off the wall like a crazy crazy film this is a movie here called come to daddy but this one is an absolute must watch this is like the kind of movie i really like which is like really strange and really weird and peculiar and there's no other word for it but weird and peculiar and it gets like crazier as it goes along and it's basically though about and elijah wood too he gave himself like this crazy haircut too, like the way his hair, he cut his hair and like his whole look and everything in this movie and just like his wardrobe that he's wearing. And essentially though, he's this guy, you know, he gets a leather letter from his father who he had not seen since he was like five years old because his father had left and you know, he's 35 now and he's like, you know, going out, you know, he gets a letter from his father and his father lives kind of out in the middle of the woods in this kind of cool house that kind of like reminded me a little bit the way it like looked of like the the, um, the, the apartment from B uh, Body Double. It kind of had that vibe a little bit to it, like sort of, but essentially though he kind of travels out to the middle of the woods to find his father finds him at the house and his father is this is like really peculiar and he's like um drinking all the time and like Elijah Wood's character is saying so dad why did you write to me what made you you know you said you needed to see me you need to see me it's really important it was urgent and he's like oh, I don't want to talk about it and he's like but but dad you got to tell me why am I here and his father is acting really strange to him and it's like um it just keeps being weirder and weirder the way he's being and essentially though something really big happens to his father and there's like a, another one that's from too that has a whole lot of twists to it and these other kind of characters that come along i you, it's one of those things though you really i don't want to spoil anything that happens in this movie because i didn't see a trailer before i watched this one and it's one of those movies where it's kind of better you kind of go into it not knowing too much but eliza wood did like an a, outstanding job in here and it, like i said it's one of those movies where you think it's one way and then it just continuously gets worse as it goes along and like it becomes like a total nightmare situation but it was this one is like i said is an absolute must watch like i said i really love elijah wood as an actor like um i've watched elijah wood since i was a kid like so like ever forever like ever since like north and everything so i've been a fan of him forever he also was great in maniac you know uh, you know the maniac remake like I said, though, must watch, absolute must watch. The next one here is one here which stars uh, Thomas Jane, and this is one here called um, 
uh, Hunter's Moon. And this one here was basically, though, about um, these girls who were, you know, having this party and, uh, you know, their parents, like, it's basically, though, it's not exactly a party, like, they move into, a, these girls move into the new um, place with their parents, but right when they get there, their parents are like, oh, well, um, we have to go, we have some business and stuff like that, so you girls have to stay here. So it's kind of weird, it's like, the second they get there, the parents have to leave right away, and they leave them there, you know, and then say, you know, you, you, we'll be back back soon you you know take care of yourselves and stuff like that and you know put the house together and all that kind of stuff because like I said they just moved in but essentially though right when they get there though there ends up being like um these guys who are planning on you know robbing the place uh because they you know they realize because they see the girls in town when they're when they're coming in and the one guy the one girl kind of like um likes the guy uh you know but basically though they get there and um because right in the very beginning of this movie too you saw this same house you saw like um, Sean Patrick Flannery's character getting attacked by somebody out there and something like attacks him. But essentially what's going on here though is uh, the people end up, you know, breaking into this house or they kind of act like, you know, the one girl like invites them in because they don't realize that these guys are there to rob them. But essentially though, um, you know, you know that there's something out in these woods. There's something, some kind of a creature or something. So it ends up being this whole big thing about them and like uh, the creature out into the woods. So it becomes kind of like a home invasion movie mixed with like a werewolf movie, kind of all combined into one. And Thomas Jane's character plays the uh, town sheriff and everything in this one. Uh, I thought this was like I said, it was actually kind of an interesting concept of you know what was happening in this one. It also has uh, Jay Moore is in this movie playing the father. Amanda Weiss is playing their mother. Like I said, I thought this was actually an interesting movie here. The next one here is a show. Uh, this is from Lionsgate as well, and this is a, a series that airs on the History Channel, so I had not heard of. I was really glad to get to review this one. It's called The Unexplained with William Shatner, and this is the complete first season of this one. And this is basically, though, about going and like talking about like unexplained things. Like, uh, for example, the one I'll talk about here is like evil places, and it's talking about like um, you know um, this. Um, haunted theme park where all sorts of you know bad things that happened in the past like these deaths talking about like um the suicide forest in japan but it's like telling you stuff that i never knew about how like the suicide forest was like built uh, it, you know, it wasn't built, but it came from, uh, you know, an eruption of this volcano, and then it, like, and they believed that, like, the volcano stuff out there could be making people who are suicidal to begin with, who go out into the forest, could make them, like, go and, go and, you know, commit suicide from this. Like, it was, like, t telling you all these different things about theories about, like, this haunted place and about, uh, it kind of, like, dives into trying to explain what could maybe be causing these type of things. But it has on here other episodes. So it's like um, Mysteries of the Mind, Incredible Survivors, Life Beyond Death, uh, Bizarre witch Rituals, uh, you know, Unnatural Nature, Strange Creatures, Mysterious Structures. Like I said, it's a really interesting thing, and it's, and it's hosted, like I said, by William Shatner. William Shatner kind of comes out, and, and the way they do it is kind of cool because they have like a backdrop behind him where they kind of put the images of what he's going to be talking about. And uh, I don't know, I thought it was a really well put together uh, series here. Like I said, this one here is called The Unexplained with uh, William Shatner. And the next one I got here is from Universal, and this is the 4K Ultra HD edition, which includes the 4K, the Blu-ray, and the digital copy of the film uh, 1917, which is directed by Sam Mendes, who directed, of course, you know, American Beauty, uh, Jarhead, Road to Perdition. Like, I always really love his stuff. And this one is, like, was so well done, and, so, and also, too, amazing on a technical standpoint, because the movie is done to look as if it's all in one continuous take, with no edits. So it's basically like it's following the two main characters through all the journey that they're going through no edits whatsoever and it's like it was amazing the way it was done and there's a great behind the scenes on here you know showing the different kind of camera setups and it's like some of these things too you're watching is going how did they they do this when they would go for, you know without these with you know com, you know to uh disguising these edits but two to make it be what, what would follow them and then immediately would go over these like they had like these wire rig kind of setups where they kind of would drag the camera across like these lakes and these just amazing ways and there's also a sequence in here too which probably has some of the greatest like lighting i've ever seen like in this this one sequence i don't want to ruin it but it's like this one scene with like these flares going up and just like the way they did it is like 
like some of the most beautiful like lighting. <laughs> Honestly, it was like amazing. Like I said, technically this movie is absolutely amazing. It's basically though following around these two soldiers who are given this um, mission that they have to get go through enemy, enemy territory and when I have this um, this uh, letter that says uh, to warn the other troops not to go this way that they think that they're supposed to go because like they um they had seen like an aerial view and saying you know that the germans are all there and if they go over there it will, they basically will all be killed so they basically have this letter that they have to go and they have to go kind of against the direction everyone else is going to get back there to tell them you know as quick as they can uh you know to get them this letter so they call off this attack to save all of them and this is basically what it is is these two guys who are the soldiers who are sent on this miss mission and it's like i said it's following them around from their perspective and like I said all with no edits or you know made to look as if there is no edits and it was done so well I, honestly it was so well done this one too um, you know uh, for best cinematography and like the cinematographer he has done cinematography for so many movies. Like he is uh, probably one of the top cinematographers. Like I said, this is an absolute must-watch. Also, too, 4K wise, this is one of the first movies too. One of the ones where I truly could really see the 4K. Because some movies you sort of see it a little bit more than others. This one though is probably, in my opinion, one of the top 4K for seeing the details of what 4K can do. Like you know, through like going through these trenches and seeing like um. The details on like the mud and how dirty things were and like the contrast levels with the lighting and everything because that's one thing that 4k does too is really with the HDR it really boosts the contrast levels and like you can see much more uh, in the shadow shadows and the darkness and all that kind of stuff and it's a much brighter picture all around as well but if you guys have 4k capacities though this is one of those ones I would absolutely say is like a must watch in 4k on here though like I was saying it has a feature right on there to, you know showing the, how they shot this one also a feature right on here on the score of the film. It was really amazing music as well. Because it's, it's not like, it's kind of a subtle score. And then it has like some big scenes with the music. And I've always, uh, you know, it was I believe it was Thomas Newman who did the music. And I always love his, um, you know, music. And the next one I got here is from Sony. And this is uh, Jumanji The Next Level. And this is, of course, the sequel to Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. Which I really, really liked that movie. That was one of those movies when I first, you know, you know, you know saw the trailer. I wasn't sure if I was going to really love it or what I was going to think. Because I, you know, Know, grew up watching, of course, Jumanji starring Ron Williams as a kid, and I absolutely loved that movie. But I actually was really surprised and really, really liked it. So I was definitely looking forward to seeing the sequel. I don't think the sequel was like as like good as the last one, but still I thought it was really, really good. And it was also a really, really fun uh, film. And this is basically, though, if you guys don't know the story of the of, you know the, of the last film, it was basically about a group of these kids who ended up, you know, uh, getting sucked into this video game, because in the original movie it was a board game, and the, the new one was a video game. They end up getting sucked into the game, and then, you know, in the game though, they have avatars, and the avatar versions of themselves, so it was like Dwayne Johnson is one of them, and it was uh, Jack Black, Kevin Hart, and Karen Gillan and, and this one though this takes place directly after the last one and you know in the game version the you know uh, Alex Wolf's character was kind of you know you know, was Dwayne Johnson. He was kind of like, um, you know, he was like in real life. He was kind of like not like a muscly guy and not popular. But in this video game, in the Jumanji world, he was really popular. And when he gets out of the game, he's kind of upset because he feels like he's not popular anymore. And he's kind of gone back to how he was. And he basically though uh, is just upset with everything. And he decides to go back into the game. And his friends, who of course you know were in the last game with him and when the last you know the last Jumanji world with them, find out about this and they kind of go after him to try and rescue him and figure out where he is and everything so it's basically them going through the adventure with them and this one though has Danny DeVito in this one uh, Danny Glover uh, you know and also um, Aquafina's in this movie in the new one I don't know I just thought it was a really fun movie like I said it wasn't like as good as the last one but still I really really like this one so if you guys are a fan of the last one still this is an absolute must watch for sure on here though it has like blu-ray exclusives like um, gag reel um, some uh, scene select with visual effects breakdown also has on here body swapping snapping into character it has reunited with the cast level up the making of Jumanji next level also in here too it has like a thing you can scan when you can play like a Jumanji kind of game uh, through your phone and it has like um, like a Jumanji map 
kind of thing here. So that's kind of cool. So some kind of a game that you can scan with your phone and like go with like play like a Jumanji type uh, game. And the next one I got here is from Sony as well. And this one here is uh, The Grudge. And this one is it's a brand new Grudge. This is like a you know a reboot of the series because you know I actually really liked the you know the uh, remake Grudge films. You know, it's the you know the first one was Sarah Michelle Gellar, and I actually thought the second one was actually okay. I think there was actually two more of them, which were like direct to video, which I never actually watched them. Somehow, like I totally never saw those ones, and I'm pretty sure there was like two more of them, I believe. And this one, though, is like I said, is a reboot to the series, and this is you know um, basically though it's all about like this cursed house where like um it's kind of like it, it holds on to like some there's like this terrible energy to this one and a lot of people had died there and this is basically focusing on the people who had been in this house and it kind of like um cuts around to like um one woman there who's like a, a home care nurse taking care of someone there who's dying uh one is like um you know John Cho's character who is like a realtor is trying to sell this house and like um another one was um like Lynn Shay's character she's like there kind of like going kind of nuts in the house and it's kind of like anyone who's in this house too it sort of starts to change them it change them it kind of makes them start to crack up and get crazy and it's just it's basically like i said uh you know dealing with like all of this and then like a cop who's like investigating this whole thing and it's just like you know the other Grudge movies were not rated R, so this one was much more like of an R-rated kind of take on the whole story. My favorite stuff in here, though, was Lynn Shay's, you know, part. Like, Lynn Shay is always great, and she, like, plays, like, great, like, crazy, and she definitely, like, has, like, a great crazy role in this movie. Uh, but on here, though, feature-wise, this has over 40 minutes of special features, including an alternate ending. and has the making of Grudge, behind the scenes of the cast and crew, extended and alternate scenes. So, like, a bunch of different, um stuff on here like i said too it, you know it's a reboot but yet in the same way it's also like a sequel too but it's, it's like a standalone one and stuff because it has like it has on here too like you know um connections to some of the other grudge films like i said though this is one not, not one of those ones where you have to see the others or anything like that it is its own thing but it has like you know kind of throwbacks to some of the other ones the next one i got here is from uh, warner brothers they sent our free copy this one let you guys know this one was available and this is uh clint eastwood's new film here uh richard jewell which stars in here um paul walter hauser uh, Sam Rockwell, Kathy Bates, uh, John Hamm, Olivia Wilde, and this is one I totally miss seeing in theaters. And I actually really like this one. I, I like um, I've always really liked the stuff that Clint Eastwood has directed. Uh, most recently, though, I really love The Mule. I, I really like when Clint Eastwood acts in the movies. I don't know, especially The Mule. Like that one was like one of those like really memorable movies, you know. And this one though too, I really thought was good. This is based on the true story, um, you know, about um, Richard Jewell's character and like um. And it's basically, though, he works as a um, security guard, and he kind of had some problems, like, w with some of the places that he worked at. And like I said, this is based on a true story, so it's kind of about his life and, like, his jobs and everything. And basically, though, he kind of would worked as a security guard, then he worked as, like, law enforcement as a cop, but then he kind of had certain things happen where he would, uh, like, um, kind of kind of would do things he wasn't supposed to do like when he was a security guard he was like pulling over people that he thought were speeding and things that he wasn't supposed to do so this kind of stuff kind of haunted him a little bit because of what one person he worked with did basically though uh, Richard Jules you know was working at a um, you know during the Olympics they were having like kind of a concert series in the park and like he sees this bag and he thinks that it could he's like well this is like a weird bag someone left this underneath of these um, these uh, this uh, bench and he's like saying well we gotta get the bomb squad and they're like oh Richard what are you what are you talking about and they're like well and of course though you know they end up discovering that there was explosives in there and if he didn't do this you know all these people would have died and he saved all these people but what ends up happening though is one of the people that he had worked with in the past basically said oh uh, I I think that you should look into Richard I think he could have done it I'm not saying for sure he did but but because of this it gets to the FBI and then Olivia Wilde's character is a um, you know a reporter and she ends up getting information from because she knows uh, John Hamm's character who is a uh, you know works for the, for the FBI and she's a reporter and she gets information and she ends up leaking this and basically though Richard Jewell goes from being this hero he's on the news all the time and they're talking about him on talk shows about 
about how he saved the day and then overnight he goes from being a hero to like the number one suspect because this stuff got leaked and there's no proof whatsoever that Richard Jewell did it like it's totally like it was it was impossible that he would have done it but the FBI was like berating him and like um making you know his mother is played by Kathy Bates and she gave an amazing performance in here basically though like they're going through all their stuff and tearing things apart and trying to like basically you know get a confession out of him and he's like well I didn't do anything and it's it was really really well done it was just it was sad too there's what this what Richard Jewell went through all this stuff and this berating and all this stuff but it has on here though um, uh, some featurettes on here like the making of Richard, Richard Jewell which is a conversation with Clint Eastwood Sam Rockwell Kathy Bates uh, John Hamm Olivia Wilde you know talking about the making of it as well as on here talking about the real story to Richard Jewell as well but one I would definitely recommend you guys check out Next one here is from Warner Brothers as well. They sent our free copy this as well. Let you guys know this is available. And this is uh, the new DC Universe uh, movie here, uh, Superman uh, Red Sun. And this is the 4K Ultra HD edition, which includes the 4K, the Blu-ray, and the digital copy of the film. And this was actually a really interesting um, movie here because it was not like... Um, it was a whole different take on Superman. It was basically as if Superman, instead of cr crashing down like in a royal farmland, you know, he crashed down in, you know... Um, you know, in um, Russia, basically, as, as if he crashed down in, like, you know, in, in you know, during the Cold War, and it was kind of like how if he was raised there, and if he was like with the Russian group, and and like, um, and it kind of had different takes on all the characters, like a really different take on Batman, and like um, Lex Luthor, and Lex Luthor was trying to stop Superman, and it was like, it's like I said, it was, it's hard to explain all of it, but it was a really interesting because it was like a totally different alternate reality version of the character and like with a different setting and everything I thought it was kind of cool because it was like I said it totally changed it all around in like a really really different way on here though too 4k wise looks really really good I, that's the one thing I feel like a lot of animation really can benefit in 4k because it's like um you know, it boosts, like I've talked about too, it boosts the contrast and the, and the brightness levels. And it's a much, much bright, more, bri you know, brighter, vibrant picture all around. On here, though, this has two episodes of the Superman Red Sun motion comics. It has a sneak peek at uh, DC's next um, animated movie, Justice League Dark, Dark um, Apocalypse War, as well as two DC um, bonus cartoons, you know, from the archives. I think they were, they were both of them were Justice League uh, cartoons on here. But like I said, just want you guys know this one was available here. The next one here is from uh, Four uh, Digital Media. And this one I really loved. Like, this was a really fun movie. I also really, really liked the... Um, covered this one and this one here is called uh, 47 hours to live like i said though this is a really cool like the way this cover has like this shine and this look to it i really really like this one and um the main actress in here too like she did a really great job like i think she's been in a couple other things i think this one of an earlier role for her but like um she did like amazing in this one and this is basically though about um these two girls who are the, these friends and they um they they find out about this game where it's like um you know like a cell phone kind of game when you look into your phone and you say like this um like you say like a, they, something they got off of like you know creepy pasta one of those like kind of uh like you know um scary kind of things and they look up these scary stories and stuff like that and they read about this one where you look into your phone and you say oh oh this this and some some kind of like a like a thing they say and whoever like the phone lands on when you say this speech you have to keep saying it uh whoever it like it goes to and takes their picture it's like on a timer mode or something and whoever's picture it takes ends up being haunted and this is essentially though about these girls you know getting haunted by this and it says you know in 47 hours you're gonna die so it's basically they have to keep on like um playing this game to keep getting the curse off of each other and they, you know at first they think of course think this is just ridiculous there's no curse this is just a joke some ridiculous thing online but then it ends up being like um you know, it continuously gets worse, and it's just, it's kind of like, um, you know, like a mix of, like, um, a movie like Truth or Dare, mixed with, like, Countdown, mixed with, like, a lot of those kind of movies, and it has that kind of, and, like, Slender Man, uh, it, that kind of a vibe, like, kind of all those kind of movies and that kind of stuff kind of mixed into one, but I honestly, like I said, really like this one, and it has, like, um, uh, and it had, like, some settings I like in here, too, because it had, like, um, the girls work at, like, this drive-in, and I don't know, I, I, I you know, don't see too many movies when they have like you know the person working in a drive-in. I don't know. I, I really like this one. This honestly though was really surprised with this one. I really really would recommend you guys check this out here. And the next one here is from Four Digital Media as well. It's a movie here called Uncaged, and this is from director uh, Dick Maas, who directed on um, the movie Amsterdam, uh, as well as on uh, the movie The Lift. 
And he also made the remake of The Lift as well, which is, you know, his, he made a remake of his own movie in English starring Naomi Watch, which I think was called The Lift as well or called The Shaft or something like that. But I, I, I really liked the, the remake. The original one I thought was okay, but I really liked that remake of it. But I've liked his movies, and this is like his first uh, new movie in a long time. And this one has on here, though, uh, the version of it in uh, the original language Dutch, as well as an English um, dubbed version as well. But this is basically about this um, a gigantic tiger that ends up getting loose in the city. And it's kind of like, um, almost like Jaws or something like that, or like a throwback to like one of those um, like really 70s kind of like Day of the Animals, kind of like um, Grizzly kind of thing. And like, and it's actually really gory as well. Like these gory kind of deaths at the hands of this um, lion. And it's basically though about like the cops like investigating the whole thing, you know, of trying to figure out exactly what this thing is and figuring out exactly how they're going to stop it. Working with like animal experts and stuff like that to try and like figure out how they're going to catch this thing because it's like totally going rap rampant and like attacking. It's like like I said, it's a total throwback to those '70s kind of movies, and it ha and it has like his same kind of music as well. And if you guys know his movies as well, they always kind of have like some kind of like humor mixed in, and it has some of that kind of like. Uh, out there kind of weird humor mixed in as well. The next one here is from Gravitas Ventures. This is a movie here called Nefarious. This one kind of has the vibe of like um, uh, Don't Breathe a little bit. It's like sort of like that kind of. And it's basically about a group of these people who were like um, planning on you know robbing this house and like they're kind of playing the whole thing out and that's kind of what they do is like they like rob things to get money and that's kind of thing to try and like you know to basically be able to live and like that's kind of what they're what they're doing but they end up finding out about this place that they go to and of course though there's like the place that they end up going to uh you know something weird is going on there and it's kind of like they walk into this whole situation and find themselves kind of trapped in there and there's like this crazy guy in there uh and it's kind of like them trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do. Like I said, it's, it has that sort of don't breathe kind of um, people under the stairs kind of vibe to this one here. Like I said, this one here is called Nefarious. And the next one here, and I have a link um, where you guys can order this one for the best price. This is from MovieZing.com. Uh, it's a movie here called Her Name Was uh, Christina, or Her Name Was Krista. This is the unrated uh, director's cut of this movie. And this one, this is like the kind of movie I like because it's like um, like a wacky kind of guy. And it's basically, though, he's like this guy who works in this office. And he's kind of like, um, kind of reminds me like a, of... Um, you know, the one from, like, Office Space who's, like, the jump to conclusions kind of guy. And he's kind of like he's, like, in at this job. And also kind of, the I believe you have my stapler character kind of combined into one. But they work at this kind of job, and he's kind of like, the guy he's like doesn't really have like a lot of luck with ladies or anything and the one guy at the job is like oh well you know I, i'm gonna try and get you a girlfriend i'm gonna try and figure things out for you and he's like well i'm kind of happy as i am and he's like well no, i'm i'm gonna try I'm, I'm gonna help you out i'm making this my mission okay, okay if you if you want to and, and he's like and it's kind of like he's trying to like get this him a girlfriend and like he's like, like dating profiles and all these things and things are not going well and he tells him about like how he can get like a prostitute to be like give him the girlfriend experience and they made a movie about that with sasha gray i remember uh you know the, the steven soddenberg directed a number of years ago of that kind of a thing going on but basically, though, things don't go well exactly. And, like, it's kind of like uh, a necromantic -y kind of sort of thing going on. But has on here, though, a commentary track and trailers on this one. The next ones here are all from um, um, Mill Creek. And there's a bunch of different releases here to let you guys know are available. Uh, the next, the first ones here from Mill Creek are uh, two um, new Ultraman uh, releases. And these are, um, this one here is Ultraman, U Ultraman Greed, the movie, uh, Connect the Wishes. And then uh, Ultraman, the movie, uh, Ultraman Orb, the movie here. And these are the newer ones here from the Ultraman series. And both these ones include, you know, the Blu-ray as well as uh, digital copies of the show, which is through the Movie Spree, um, you know, uh, streaming app here. Like I said, one of you guys know that these ones were available. I'm, I'm really cool that, you know, um, you know, Mill Creek is, you know, continuing to release because there's a lot of different Ultraman, you know, like I said. And I didn't even know that Ultraman was still going. And there's like, a, you know, currently, and there's like a whole bunch of really new ones. Uh, this one here from Mill Creek is a double uh, feature, which includes the Blu-ray and a DVD of both of them and it's a it has um, two Wesley Snipes films the one here is the contractor and the other one here is the fan which stars uh, Wesley Snipes and Robert De Niro the fan is a really underrated movie you do not hear about that one too often and it's a really really great movie about you know um 
Robert De Niro's character is kind of like a obsessed fan, and it's kind of like um, kind of how far obsession can go with like you know just kind of stalking and all this kind of stuff and the things that he's doing. It's a really really great movie. So it's one of those ones if you guys have never seen this one, you know that one. It's an absolute must watch. It also has in, in there uh, John Leguizamo, you know as Benicio del Toro. So a really great cast. But like I said, definitely one I would recommend you guys check out. And the next one I got here is from Mill Creek as well. And this is a movie that I really liked a lot. And it's called A uh, Woman on the Edge, which stars Jeffrey Patterson as well as Rumor Willis. This is also an um, ITN distribution title. This is one though I know you guys can get in person at a Walmart if you guys want to get this one in person. This is basically though about Rumor Willis's character who is like this um, journalist who works for this TV station and um, basically though in the beginning of this uh, film though uh, her she has a twin sister who she had not seen in a long time and kind of like she never really she didn't really grow up with her twin sister because like the twin sister was like I think lived with her father or something like that or was adopted something like that so they didn't really know each other too well but in the beginning of the movie though her, her twin sister is like on the edge of this building and she ends up of jumping and killing herself. And Rumor Willis's character, though, is trying to kind of get to the bottom of the whole thing because she kind of feels like there might be more to this and like there's other people who have died the same way recently and she's starting to think that maybe like it was like she was killed or there's more to this whole thing. And then like she works at this TV station, though, with um, Jeffrey Pattinson's character and he's like a therapist who has this kind of talk show uh, like talking about political things and theories on things and he's getting ready to like kind of expand his show to be like aired all around America instead of like a small area it's going to kind of going to become much bigger show and um she's kind of talking to him trying to see if he can help and he has this one patient that kind of is saying some weird things and uh you know um she's kind of thinking that maybe he could have been like involved with his sister's death because of the things that he was saying about killing people and all these kind of crazy things. Um, Jeffrey Patterson's character too, uh, like his character is always like, um, like asking people out for like, to, I was like, Oh, would you like to go to lunch with me today? And he's, and they're like, well, and, or would you, would you like to have it? We have a dinner, uh, you know, a, a meeting for dinner. And he's like, always oh, asking everybody for lunch for dinner all the time. It's kind of funny. And, but like, I, I really like this movie. It, it, you know, not everything about it was perfect, but I thought Rumor Rose did a really good job. And I, 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 I like the whole like kind of thing where you're trying to figure out exactly what happened to the sister. Was there more to this and everything? Uh, the next one here is from Mill Creek as well. This is a collection here of Benji movies. This is the four movie collection here which has a uh, Benji the original classic movie it has for the love of Benji a uh, Benji off the leash a uh, Benji's very own Christmas special and all these ones you know were um, mastered in, uh, in I believe mastered in uh, you know, yeah, all digitally remastered in widescreen here. But Benji, though, I grew up watching these ones as a kid. Not as much as some of the other ones, um, but I, I know I watched them on, like, VHS and stuff as a kid. You know, the one dog one that I watched the most, um, which I'm hoping some point gets a blur release, is a movie called Bingo. Like, that was one of those ones as a kid. I watched that. I watched Home, Homer Bound a lot, but Bingo, for some reason to me, that was, like, one of my favorite, like, dog movies as a kid. This one here is one that I had, I, I think I had seen like the cover of this one, but had never seen it before. And it stars Ryan Reynolds, uh, Hope Davis, uh, Octavia Spencer has a part in this one, uh, Elle Fanning, uh, Melissa McCarthy. And this is called The Nines. And this is basically though, it's kind of like, um, uh, it's like an anthology movie where they're all playing, uh, you know, Hope Davis, uh, Ryan, uh, you know, Ryan Reynolds, uh, you know, uh, Melissa McCarthy. They're all playing like different characters. And like one of them is like, uh, Ryan Reynolds' character, who's an actor, and he's kind of having like um, on like house arrest because something he did, and his only contact is Melissa McCarthy's character. One is like a video game designer, one is a writer, and it's like it's interesting too because they all kind of like connect in a strange way a little bit, and it's, it's a really interesting kind of movie, um, you know. And, and, and it's from 2006. Like I said, I it's, no, I'd seen the cover to it, but I'd never seen this one before. And the last one's from um, Mill Creek, and these ones I can't get really show the cover, so no one says anything about them. But it's two more films from the um, you know Andy Sedaris um, line because they've been releasing a whole lot of different Andy Sedaris movies uh, and these ones here are both from uh, the 90s the early 90s the one here is called Hard Hunted and the other one here is of you know uh, Fit to Kill 
like I said, I can't really show the covers just so no one says anything about them. But um, these ones have on here on both of them. Uh, Director's Introduction by Andy Sedaris. Uh, commentary track. Behind the scenes uh, featurette. Uh, trailers on these ones. Like I said, these are really fun, like, um, action kind of like, you know, um, you know, 90s. Because like the, the other ones were from the 80s. And these, like I said, these are the, the early 90s. But they're really, really fun movies. So like I said, just cancel the covers just so no one says anything about them. And the last ones here are all from... Um, Umbrella Entertainment. These are Australian releases, and all these ones are region free, so you guys can watch these ones no problem in any U.S. Uh, you know DVD or Blu-ray player. This one here is the movie, which is one that I had not seen this movie since this first came out. And I always think when I think of this movie, I always think of a uh, Scary Movie Two. A Scary Movie Two was kind of like spoofing this one. It was also spoofing a number of other things as well. But this was one of the big basis of the spoof for Scary Movie Two. And this is the movie here called The Haunting, which stars Liam Neeson, Kathy. Catherine Zeta Jones, uh, you know, uh, Owen Wilson, Lily, Lily Taylor. This is basically, though, about Liam Neeson's character who is saying that he's doing like this um, sleep study for people who are having problems sleeping, and he's doing it in this like, kind of old haunted house. And basically, though, he's not actually doing that. He's like, you know, doing studies on fear. And it's kind of like. Um, they're all in there and like weird sort of things happen to them like um and he's kind of like studying the whole thing and it's it's, it's a really cool movie though this also was you know uh, the haunting in hill house was based on this same story um you know and this was also of course there was a remake as well i think the original was from like 1960 something i believe maybe 60 or 62 i can't remember for sure but this one has never had a uh, u.s blu-ray release so really glad to have a blu-ray of this one and like i said if you guys have not seen this one definitely one i would recommend you guys uh, check out Next one here is, um, like I said, th these ones are region free as well, so you can watch these ones in any U.S. Uh, DVD player or Blu-ray player. And this one here is uh, After Midnight, and this one is from um, the star of the movie The Battery, isn't this one? And this also stars uh, Bria Grant, and it's basically though about, um, it's basically like. Um, they, they, they're kind of together and they had like their relationship and everything and it's kind of like how, how they you know everything was kind of was perfect but then like um you see it like kind of it kind of flashes back to like now and then back when they were first dating you know the star you know the main guy and his girlfriend you know played by Brea Grant and basically you know um you see him uh, like now, he's kind of like sitting in front of the door, like on this couch, kind of like guarding the door with a shotgun, and he's like, so, like shooting at the door, and he's like say, acting like there's something outside, and he's like saying crazy stuff, like something's scratching up the door, and there's something out there, and there's something's going on, and all this kind of thing. And it's kind of like, well, where does his, you know, his, you know, uh, Brayer Grant's character go? And it's kind of like, you, you know, you're finding out more about what is going on, and is he like imagining that something is out there? Is there like a bear? Is there something? And it's kind of, like I said, it's like this whole kind of mystery history to exactly what's going on and you and they flash back more to you know their relationship before all this had happened and kind of like leading up to him by the couch guarding this door and all this kind of stuff it's a very very interesting movie and the next one i got here is from umbrella entertainment as well it's a movie here called standing up falling down which stars uh, ben schwartz and billy crystal and always a fan of billy crystal so i was really glad to see him in a new film and like i've always like like i said been a fan of him ever since like throw him off from the train which is probably my favorite of everything he's been in just because i really love that movie it's like such a wacky movie and then probably the um city slicker movies this one too Millie Crystal like totally goes for like a really different kind of role like he also involves like taking off his hat and it's like a really like unexpected thing that he did for this movie as well for the character and essentially though it's about Ben Schwartz's character who is a stand-up comedian but he's like kind of like not having a whole lot of luck and he's not doing too well and he's kind of having his own set of problems but one day at a bar he ends up meeting Billy Crystal's character who and his character is like a dermatologist and like he's of like, course much older than him and they kind of become friends and kind of like um, start kind of hanging out. But Billy Crystal, though, you, you'd think that Ben Schwartz's character would be the one who would be kind of like, you know, more crazy and the drinking and all that. But no, it's Billy Crystal's character. He's like drinking and having his own set of problems. And they're, essentially, though, they're kind of helping each other in a way through their own sort of problems. And it's a really, really well done uh, character piece here. Like I said, it was, really, it was great to see Billy Crystal in a new film here. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching and subscribing. But before we go, we have an unboxing, though, of the postcard killings box we'll check that out right now 
But before we go, like I was saying, we have an unboxing here for the film uh, The Postcard Killings, which stars uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. This is one of those films, though, you guys can see right now on uh, video on demand, on streaming. It's had a limited uh, theatrical release. But we'll take a look, though, inside at what's in here. The first thing in here is a thing that says, uh, Love Will Never Die, and The Postcard Killings. And it's like a um, kind of like a journal kind of thing for the movie. Like you'd write when you're going on a trip. Because this is all supposed to be like stuff you'd have on a trip. And then it has like a postcard here. On the back it says, uh, Watch the Innocent Die. It says on there, In Theaters, On Demand, and Digital, March 13th on here. This is from, you know, RLJ uh, Films. And as well as uh, here, he, the you know, uh, novel, uh, the number one best-selling author, James Patterson, the scariest vacation thriller ever, ever, postcard killings, you know, here. As well as these... Um, you know, uh, baggage tags here, too. So that's pretty cool, like luggage tags. Also in here is a pen, you know, a postcard killings pen. So it's cool little, like I said, package here for all the kind of things you would, like, take onto a trip. But like I said, you guys can see this one now on, you know, um, streaming and vi video on demand and that kind of stuff. But anyway, though, guys, thanks so much for watching and subscribing. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these videos, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys later.